Apparently, I've missed an amazing series that was played a couple of days ago in the ESL Open Cup number 217. I think by the time you're watching this, number 220 just wrapped up. So this is a series that's like three weeks old. I know, crazy. Anyways, from what I understand, especially the final game between these two legends is an absolute banger. So we're going to find out together exactly what ended up going down. Who do you think this is going to be? I mean, he doesn't have his decal floating around on the main hatchery, but this can only ever be Mr. Dark. Whenever a series is much recommended to me, I notice it's, yeah, pretty much always dark. The man likes to play some feisty StarCraft, to say it lightly. His opponent, though, also somebody who does not shy away from playing some very funky builds. We're looking at none other than Astrea's main Nexus. Alrighty, South Korea takes on North America, the United States. I'm excited for this one. So far, nothing all too weird, though. Yeah, we've got ourselves a hatchery first on the low ground, into a gas geyser, into a spawning pool. All of those cool kids these days with their 15 hatchery openers. None of that right here for our South Korean legend, who just keeps on steadily on with the 16 hatch. He loves this build. Yeah, he plays it most of the time. I think he would rather go for like, I don't know, a pool first or something like that if he... He would rather build one of his hatcheries on the other side of the map than make a hatchery at 15 supply, it seems. He does mix it in from time to time, but not nearly as often as some of the other highly ranked Zergs. Now, what in the world is this? Um, Astrea, your opponent is not a Protoss. I mean, this would also be a really weird build against Protoss, to be fair, but... So this is a Nexus into double gateway Cybercore? Okay, double gas in the main base with two probes in them each. We're gonna saturate the one on the right first, then we're gonna whip that rally point around towards the left? No, we're gonna rally it to the low ground instead. Okay, we're very specifically mining with only four probes in gas. A double gateway opener is a bit funky in this particular matchup because, well, it means that you can't really afford Stargate units, right? So generally speaking, Stargate openers are very popular because they're considered to be the best. I guess the idea right here is that this is going to be at least a bunch of adepts. I would imagine you go up to four to try and harass the Zerk, and we did get the third base denied apparently, but to try and deny the Zerk, or sorry, harass the Zerk until the link speed is done? I mean, you are on a bit of a timer, though. Third hatchery right now taken right here on the left side of the map instead. And even though I tend to fast forward in Zerk versus Frodo's games through the first two minutes of it, right? Just because we've all, well, I mean, the majority of people that watch StarCraft in 2024 have seen early game ZVP hundreds of times. Usually it's very well figured out. Love the usage right there of the tall grass. Very clever stuff. Anyways, this this is a bit of a funky one. Yeah, very glad I did not start this particular cast at minute two. I mean, whenever I feature either Dark or Astrea, I wouldn't really skip the first few minutes, but when we have both of them, it is clear that right from the start, we have a little bit of funkiness. Uh, Probe did not mineral walk towards the third base. Luckily for it, that does mean that it may very well stay alive for a little while. So far though, does Adept, yeah, they haven't really achieved too much. I mean, we haven't really lost anything either, so this has really only been now there's additional adepts coming up. It's just been two adepts for the time being into a sentry stalker and then a quick third nexus. Hmm. So... Hmm. Normally, so this third nexus timing at like 3 minutes and 45 seconds, that is the standard timing for a Stargate-based opener. Right? So usually you go oracles, and then you use the oracle to either arrest the Zerg, keep them occupied on the other side of the map, or to take the third base, right? You kind of do a similar setup right over here. Normally, when you go straight Twilight Council opener, you will not be able to take the Nexus that early, because you simply don't have enough stuff. Oh, I was gonna say, blink really makes no sense. We're gonna go into a... This is a third Nexus, at 3 minutes and 45 seconds, with a Dark Shrine at about 4 minutes and 30 seconds. This is an Astrea build. Yeah, in case you're unfamiliar, <laughs> this is an Astrea build to a T. We've got some shield batteries over here on the high ground as well. Those are very difficult to, well, uh, snipe for the Zerk. And he may very well need it because rather than playing macro against this, Dark has decided that this is the perfect opportunity. 
I guess the third hatchery positioning over here for him just makes it difficult to ignore. This is a perfect opportunity for our Zerk, apparently, to go for a good old Roach Ravager Ling Rush. Blink on the back of this eventually, too. Keep in mind that there is no detection here for the Zerk at all. This is hatchery base play, so there's no lair. The only thing that we have is, I guess, Spork Crawlers at this lair, but okay, here we go. Love those, those uh, shield batteries on the high ground. Very clever play right here. By the American Protoss player. Do you hear it in the distance? U. S. A. U. Easy hold. Easy hold right there by Estrella. Do you hear the people sing? Oh, wait, no. That's Lizzie Miserable. That's... Mm -mm. No. Not even close. Anyways, the Dark Templar are here. Not all heroes wear capes. But these guys do. Yeah. I always thought as a kid that if you wore a cape, especially as a superhero, that would allow you to fly. But apparently, uh, yeah, these guys can't. I guess the real flying units that are cloaked in StarCraft 2 are, well, Benchies. Very different than Dark Templar, though. This is a weird game. <laughs> Australia right now with a massive economical advantage. 64 probes versus, well, less than 50, at least when I started that sentence for Dark, who's now desperately trying out to... He, he's desperately trying to power out as many of those workers as he possibly can. Estrella ready to harass a fourth base that doesn't exist? <laughs> he was uh, assuming that that one would be taken because he is already taking his own fourth. So there's... A Nexus about a third of the way done. I mean, this is going incredibly well right now for Estrella. The only thing that I don't like for Estrella it is, yeah, is that he's playing against Dark. Dark is a man who loves playing from behind, it seems. To a point where I sometimes kind of feel like he's purposefully putting himself in that position, just so he can try a little bit harder, you know? Like, when the game becomes too easy, Apparently, you make the game more difficult for yourself, and well, this, this is not a bad start, right? If you want to begin a bit of a comeback, grabbing a bunch of those scouting units from the Protoss is really nice. The way that Dark is planning to come back into this particular series is by building a Spire. So, he's gonna probably try to whip out about a dozen or so Mutalisks all at the same time. Chip Charlie, what are you doing, buddy? Chip... Can't believe it. Talking in Observer Chat while I'm casting a game way in the future? Ay, 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 ay. D Ch Charlie! Can't believe this. I don't even know who Chip Charlie is! Ruining my video like this. Ay, 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 ay. No, I'm kidding. It's not a big deal. Although, personally, I will be honest with you, I would never talk in Observer Chat. No, I wouldn't do it. Because it gets picked up by the replays. Anyways, here come the Mutalisks. The problem is, Estrella has shown up with a massive army. And this is an army that has, well, Blink Stalkers in it, right? So the Mutas can't really fight this. I would imagine the Mutas are gonna try and fly around the outside of the map to try and maybe get some, I don't know, harassment damage done in a natural expansion, or maybe the third base, maybe the main, something like that. But, hmm. <clears throat> I think if Estrella attacks right now, he's got a good chance to win the match. Problem is, he doesn't know. Yeah, he has not seen the Spire, it's hiding behind the natural mineral line. Plus one air weapons is coming up too for Dark, so he is ready to try and, well, turn this into Mass Mutalisk. He's found a lot of success playing Mass Muta, it's just such a dangerous play. Especially when your opponent, well, normally would go for a Stargate opener. Because Phoenixes are the natural enemy of Mutalisks. In this particular game though, we didn't have a Stargate opener, we had that weird double gateway start. So maybe the Mutas are, because of that, gonna be a little bit more powerful. Yeah, Blink is done. We do have a few Archons, or at least one. The Glowy Boy is nice. If Dark gets back into this, man, I, I wouldn't be surprised. He's very dangerous, but this is not a game that Zerk is supposed to win after that atrocious early game. 12 probes is not a bad beginning, though. Looks like we get a free, a few, uh, a free a few Zealots over there up north as well. 12 additional ones, by the way, showing up right now. That is crazy. So he is going mass muta. Lovely stuff. Okay. Can we get the recall? Nope. Those four zealots just disappeared into the sky. Yeah. I don't know if they get warped back to the mama ship or however it works, but 
They're dead, is all I'm saying, okay? Maybe they're not dead, is what I'm basically saying, though. They may get rewarped again at some later time, I guess. So we're going up to, yeah, roughly 30 Mutalisks here. That is a lot of Mutalisks. Stargates are coming up, but Estrella actually pretty slow with the response there. He saw the additional Mutas a while ago. Now we're getting to the point where Mutas can actually fight Stalkers relatively comfortably. So Estrella is making a transition towards Mass Phoenix. It's just that that still is about seven years away. At least that's how it feels. Okay. Yeah, it's so slow, man. Ay, ay, ay. Oh. Because you kind of need to get the fusion core as well, or the fleet beacon, right? You can get the, the ranged upgrade, and then finally you can kind of make it work, but sort of. Straya right now also a bit supply blocked, so you can't even really start up the Phoenix production yet. Why does Dark always do this, though? Like, why does the man willingly put himself in these positions where he's playing from behind, and then suddenly he seems like he's much better at the game? You know, he's like your, your standard anime protagonist. The guy who fell behind so many times, but then ultimately when it truly matters... That's when he seems to power up. This is still not an easy game for the Zerg, because it's this strange unit composition. But one advantage of mass mass muta, right? So now we're at the 34 mutas. One big advantage right here for the Zerg is that you can actually just counterattack. You don't have to... You don't have to fight the Protoss army. Ah, this is going well, though. More and more Mutas are coming. Back in the early days of StarCraft II, if you're a boomer like myself, Mass Muta into a Spinecrawler forest was a yeah, popular style. So what you would do is you would make Mass Muta just like this, and then a million Spinecrawlers at home, and then whenever Protoss would try to attack you, you would counterattack. Obviously, the win condition in a game of StarCraft II is to destroy your opponent's structures, and you can pretty much always kill your opponent's structures much faster than Protoss can kill yours. So, I wouldn't even mind seeing a million spine crawlers coming up right over here, or maybe 20 rather than a million. I guess the problem right here for that, yeah, that strategy in 2024 is the Anion Pulse Crystals. That upgrade is like a decade old at this point, but... This gives additional range to Phoenixes. Phoenixes can already kill Mutas, because they can move and shoot at the same time. In, uh, in theory, you only really need one, but... With the ranged upgrade, it makes life much easier. Okay. Dark expanding all over the map. Do you go double spire with this sort of style? I feel like double spire into mass upgrades might not even be a terrible choice if we aren't just gonna use them for harassment. Now the phoenixes are spotted though, but with this many mutas, you do have to respect them. But yeah, ranged is finishing up, so that's the upgrade right over there. It's gonna make those little laser beams from the phoenixes purple. Dark trying to deny it, but the upgrade's already done and now he sees it. And that is gonna make these mutas a lot worse. Yep. Dark didn't know. He had no idea that phoenixes were being produced. He's adding on 22 additional mutas. Alright. Um, I'm a little afraid that what we're seeing here... ...is a Zerk with a very slow death animation. I kind of feel like that's been the case for a long while now. If Australia can force the fight on the other side of the map, which I think is exactly what he's going for. This is not adrenal glanced Zerklings. Like, these are, these are pretty weak. Well done right here by Estrella. Yep, I think he's gonna... Oh, you gotta respect his army still, but I think he's gonna win. With a landslide victory. GG. Sight Delta is going to be the second game in this series. Yeah, so Dark not opting to go for a 15 hatch on the low ground. So he's gonna get his natural expansion blocked. Is he gonna just go for the third base? Did he just fake a proxy hatch? I think he did. Yep. No. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> dark, stop! Make a base! Make an expansion, Dark! What are you doing? Oh my... Okay, so this is a 19 supply hatch at 450 minerals. Now we're still gonna send that other drone towards the other side of the map, and I guess... Build another natural? Love this though from Estrella. He saw the move out. Yep. Cuts a corner. And gets the Nexus. Easy. 
easy play so far here. So the mind game's not working out here for Dark whatsoever. All right, well, this is uh, the backup plan. Yeah, this is the backup plan. It's still a nuisance, it's still annoying. Stealing one of the gases here for the Protals is frustrating, but shouldn't be the end of the world. Although this is, I thought for a second it was double gas on the production tab. I mean, that was, but obviously one of the gases is inside of the main base of the Protals. This should be something that Estrella can work around, right? So since he did get the natural nice and early, he can just take one of these gases. He could go for a Zealot and kill that. Main problem here is that this can definitely throw a bunch of your build orders off. Just a tad. But this is Estrella, right? I think Estrella is a pretty flexible player. Shouldn't really be that big of an issue. Okay. So let's see. What do we do now? Are we gonna go Twilight Council, Stargate? I mean, when you only have a single gas at this point in the game, Stargate openers are impossible. Or at the very least, very delayed. And this is something Estrella, yeah, certainly, like he knows that Dark knows this too, right? So maybe a Stargate opener is not necessarily that terrible of a choice. Ah, of course, we're gonna make a proxy pylon into a proxy gateway on our own side of the map. This is, uh, if you're confused, no worries. I am just as confused as you are. Are we gonna proxy something else too, Estrella? Is that the plan? Are we gonna proxy uh, Twilight Council? Like, what's the plan here? No, he's going for an additional gateway in the main base. Are we just going triple gate? Are we gonna go four gate? Like, what's the, hmm. I can, after careful consideration, call this one of the builds of all time. Yeah. Whether or not it's good or bad, I can't quite let you know that yet. But I think, in my mind, this is pretty horrible. Dark in the meantime, by the way, uh, not really making that many workers of his own either, because he did still want to make a third hatchery. Now the queen comes out, we're gonna, well, the, the third queen that is. He did get just enough gas for metabolic boost, and that's about it. Does he see this? If he finds this gateway, that is... That would be horrible. That would be... Okay, now he doesn't see it. Overlord is headed in that direction, but also not right in the... Yeah, so this is the reason why. You can warp in that little nuke. So these adepts are gonna be mostly unscouted. Front door is wide open, though. Stalker here busy trying to work on that extractor. And that ultimately means that the Zerklings are now in the base. Sometimes you try to mind game so hard that the mind game actually becomes a reverse mind game. <laughs> so stupid. This... <laughs> like, sometimes pro gamers accidentally become, like, Platinum League, you know? It is... There's, there's, like, there's logic to it if you pay very close attention, but you do have to sort of squint your eyes a little bit. Sometimes professional games turn into viewer-submitted replays. He still killed seven drones though, or eight drones in total now, and he still is economically fine because Dark is not droning up. So Dark only at, yeah, 28 workers at this point in the game. That is so bad. He's looking around the map right now because he's figured out that something is fishy and something is wrong. He hasn't seen enough. Look at him, he's scouting everywhere. All right, now he, now he finds it. Now he finds a gateway, and that immediately pulls the rest of those links back. This is gonna be costly though to clean up for the Zerk player, at least if he's gonna run the links in like that, but yeah. Ultimately, it's a trade he's happy to make. Okay, so, big picture. Where are we currently at? It's Astrea with a bunch of gateways. Dark is making six overlords while being at 66 out of 66 supply. All right, Dark literally the beast. Ah, naturally, the next, the next stage, um, it's double Stargate. Double Stargate Immortal Production. Um, um, I mean, we can go Phoenixes. We can cross our fingers and hope we fly into a bunch of Mutas on accident. Joke's on him though, because Dark's economy has been so bad for such a long time that he doesn't actually have a lair. I mean, the lair is only about a eh, maybe two-thirds or so of the way done at this point. 
Double Stargate Phoenix is still okay, of course, against other builds too, but if this is just Mass Ling, do you really want to be producing... Oh god, you are left behind, buddy, I'm sorry. Do you really want to be producing Phoenixes? Okay, well, we are. As early as that Nexus was over at the third base in the previous game, in this match it is going to be incredibly late. There it is, 6.45. That's three minutes later than in game number one. He's making Immortals and Phoenixes into somebody who's really just shown mass Zorkling up to this point. Luckily, Dark is an accommodating Zerk. He decides to now transition into some Roaches here, which is fair enough. Yeah, ultimately though, Dark does still have three bases, right? And he is gonna saturate them eventually. Even though it's much later than I would have liked to see, he is now at a significantly stronger economy than the Protoss. So it's gonna take a while before Astrea is gonna be able to grab that advantage again. There is the Spire coming up, oh no. Oh no, that is like the last thing that you need to make here. Notice the distinct lack of any sort of Overseer scouting here from Dark. That's crazy to me. Yeah, he does send in an Overseer right now, but he has no clue what's going on for such a long time. Luckily for him, he will be able to get the Overseer Scout in, most likely anyways. Ah. Yeah, no, he should be able to get it. Nope, never mind. He doesn't see this before he makes Mutas. Oh no, this could be so bad. If he starts up a big group of Mutas, we basically get a repeat of game number one. At which point, uh, Dark is screwed. Ish. Because even if he loses 10 Mutas right now, he's probably fine. <laughs> so weird. This whole game is actually very strange. These two play some of the most entertaining StarCraft. I feel like it's very entertaining if you have a good understanding of the meta. You know what I mean? Because these guys are trying really hard to outplay one another. But if you have only seen like five games of SC2 at this point, and it's all like... My confusion may not really make a lot of sense at that point, you know? Like, the decisions that these guys are going for may not be quite as entertaining. This is- this is your acquired taste. Yeah. This is- this is like your cup of coffee, or like your first whiskey or whatever, you know? Like, the first time around, you're like, ugh. What am I even doing right now? Alright, that- that's what this game is. This is an acquired game of StarCraft 2. Anyways. Spire does get spotted. Luckily for Dark, he busts all of his gas on Ravagers. So there's 12 Phoenixes out right now, hidden inside of the main base. Obviously, they're still pretty good against Ravagers, but if Dark would have made like 12 Mutas there instead, I think it would have been atrocious for him. So he made the Spire, but did not commit to it. I think he feels the bait. Yeah. Oh my god, here we go. Massive surround by the Zerg. Now suddenly those phoenixes will show themselves, but I think Dark already called the bluff. Expertly played right here by the Zerg. Even though it's crazy, and even though I don't really love all parts of it, I really do like that Dark did not decide to go mute us. That is a proper high level decision, by the way. The fact that he decided to not commit to it after the structure finished up, and instead committed to making Ravagers there, is kind of wild. Well, Void Razor coming up, but the third Nexus is already dead. Now we're 10 minutes into the game, and the main and the natural are gonna start running low. 35 probes on 4 mineral fields in the main is not quite optimal. And even though this may get cleaned up eventually, because there's currently no units that shoot up, Corruptors are coming here for Dark. He's making 14 of them, and that is gonna get rid of any sort of Void Ray and any sort of Phoenix. Alrighty! This is the game that a lot of you reached out to me about. Dark versus Astraea on Heart Lead. So I figured this was gonna be a game number three, by the way. Small spoiler for me. I called it the final game at the introduction of this particular video, so I guess it's fine. I'm glad I casted game number one and two, though, because I really feel like it sets the stage for this particular match right now. This is... Okay, I don't really know exactly what to expect, but from what I understand, it's the craziest one in the series so far, and this, this series has been pretty wild up to this point. So Dark starts off the game by sending a drone towards the other side of the map. He's now gonna fake, all right, a natural expansion that is moving into a third base instead. 
But what we're doing is proxy hatching? Yep. Proxy hatchery goes down in the middle of nowhere. Dark really does want to make the third base though. Or he really doesn't rather make uh, the third base. He probably wants to make the natural expansion. There is still no spawning pool on the back of this. That makes this all a little bit crazy. I would imagine we have to make a spawning pool after this gas geyser right now. Because otherwise this game becomes pretty stupid. Yeah, because then you have a proxy hatchery and you can't actually do anything with it. The gas, it's going to allow him a relatively quick link speed. That's nice. Roach Warren, not a great option because it would just simply be so delayed. Alternatively, if Dark really feels crazy, is he could transfer a few drones towards the other side of the map, and this does now get scouted, to make spine crawlers. A spine crawler rush in 2024 is, I don't think it's something I've really seen. Not at least at this level. It is considered to be one of the weaker builds at this level of SC2. But then again, how frequently do you really play against it? There's a drone going across. There's two more! Darkest Spinecrawler rushing! Spinecrawler rushing with link speed on the back of this? Is he... No, I don't think he's gonna... No, he's not gonna be able to afford it. Uh, there's no way he's gonna go Roach Warren here. He needs to wait until Zerklings show up, though. That's the problem, because one... Yeah, one Zealot. I mean, maybe if you make, like, three spines in total, it's nice. But Dark doesn't really have the money for it. He's gonna leave one drone in gas, start up metabolic boost. That's another 100 minerals down the drain. Drones apparently take a bit of a beating before they ultimately do turn into spines themselves. I think this should have been a second, maybe even a stalker, but maybe a second zealot. Ah, Adept is just simply not that powerful against structures, although it is nice when it comes to sniping that drone. Queen at this point is available. She really wants to lay down a tumor, I would imagine. Zealot does end up going down right there. Keep in mind that if one of these structures gets poked to death, right? Say, for example, the Cyber Core or the Forge or, for example, the Gateway here. Lynx can start running in. Bailing Bust on the back of this too. Dark is going for the entire Zerg book of, like... I was gonna say a bad word. I don't think I can do that without my video getting uh, in trouble. But, uh, yeah, that's what he's going for. You were thinking the same thing too, right? The Zerg book of BS? I think that's what we're going for here. Proxy hatch, spine crawler rush into Ling Bane Bust. Okay. Um, we do have that research mostly done. Finishing warp gates would be tremendous here for Astrea, who's now gonna turn on the shield battery to try and keep that cybernetics core alive. I would love to see another chrono boost, but apparently we don't need it. Yeah, warp gates will finish, and that is a big one. That upgrade is now finished for every single gateway that will follow. Although at this point, there's really only one. There's no additional gates in the main base either. So you know what? Maybe it wasn't really that big of a deal in the end. <laughs> okay. I'm a little concerned for the Zerkling Flood though. Because, yeah, you can turtle up over here on the low ground. But links are really quick. So even if you do have a lot of photon cannons set up... These Zerklings, I mean, even if they turn into Banelings, although he's decided to go for a lair? Oh my god, Dark! This is the cheesiest I have ever seen Dark. Are we gonna go Overlord Trumps? Whoa. Okay, so four Banelings are coming up. I have casted a lot of cheesy Dark games. This is kind of nuts. One Baneling right now gets spotted, so that's nice. There's no way he's anticipating the lair, though. Yeah, the lair is what really is setting me off. He's making this look like he's gonna bailing bust these photon cannons, but I don't think that's what he's gonna do. No, we're gonna do a triple overlord drop straight into the main base. Okay. Is this good? I'm inclined to say yes and... Or no yes? I... Hmm. The main base is certainly going to die. There's really nothing that, that Astrea can do about this. He sees it right now, or maybe at least he's got a feeling that something is fishy. There's no way. Yeah, evacuating the probes is the right call. Bailing, trying to get the hit, does not quite get the hit. I think he should have maybe turned against these other probes. Eat away. Astrea saves the workers. 
He should stop producing probes, though, because he does not have any minerals for it. Yeah, so he's got 33 probes right now in the, in the natural expansion. We do have a very slow baneling drop, at least attempted. Double Stargate once again, but this time around, <laughs> it's inside of the natural. This is effectively one base double Stargate Phoenix, which is about as bad as it sounds. As Dark now takes his own expansion all the way on the other side of the map. Hmm. He needs to do something though. I love this sentry. A force field would be amazing. Don't, don't, no, no, no. Astrea, 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 please. Okay, <laughs> okay. Whew, thank God. I was. <laughs> that would have been insane. Void rays are gonna be coming up instead. I think it might be the better choice. Late force field over there, though. No, Bailings do still unload. Oh no, Astrea! Astrea, no! Oh my god, that was going so well for you. It's still fine, but... Hmm. Yeah, okay, I think that's still actually acceptable. I thought for a second he was gonna lose the entire mineral line. <sighs> Dark. What? How do you go into a game and you're like, yep, this is what we're doing. Proxy hatch into spine crawler rush into lair, ling bane, overlord drops. The only thing that's lacking right now is a nidus worm with swarm host, okay? Like, that's basically the only thing lacking. Astrea, losing a lot of probes, decides to retake the main base. <laughs> Creep tumor in the main base. <laughs> How did Brenda get here? Did she walk? Sorry, Brenda's just about to die. I. Oh, Brenda obviously popped out of that hatchery. I, for some reason, I thought Brenda could only ever have walked from the main base. All right, all right, all right. This is a little side adventure in our, you know, yeah, large adventure of this game. This is uh, Brenda dying. Pay your respects in the comment section, please. That was the saddest thing ever. Now, whilst you're there, by the way, if you don't feel like commenting on this video, that's fine. But please do me a favor, hit that like button. It really does help these videos out. I feel like this is one of the series that a lot of people would like to see. And hitting you hitting the like button, I know it doesn't sound very significant, but it really does help promote this video to people that like similar videos as you. Which would be cool. If you really liked it, so far at least, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So you get notified as soon as future videos go live. I try to usually upload about five to six times a week. Anyways. Uh, the friend, okay, friend of 2.0 right there does get sniped ultimately, but Astrea is now going up against what is effectively two base Zerk with a bunch of tentacle creep arms on the minimap. <laughs> <laughs> Spreading creep tumors backwards. Are are we going proxy hatch right now? Is that what we're doing? Void rays in the meantime, by the way, harassing drones. We do have a load of oracles available. So what I thought was previously going to be maybe phoenixes. Yeah, I think this makes a lot of sense. Void rays and oracles are actually superior at this stage in the game. Funky as all of this is, I still think I like it better for Astrea. Double spore crawler in the main base. That's a lot of drones going down. Dark! No way! He goes for another proxy hatch. What has this man put in his morning tea, man? What is what is going on right now? This is the cheesiest game I've ever seen Dark play. And that really says a lot. Because I have I have I've seen a lot of cheesy dark matches. So this is turning into the Mio Mica threat now, right? Just in a very convoluted way. <laughs> Two base Hydra. In my mind, that's the Mio Mica build. There's Burrow. There's the Hydras coming up. Hmm. Hmm. Finally, the proxy hatchery is taken care of. I feel like, yeah, no, that's. <laughs> Australia! Australia's thinking about expanding. You cannot build on creep. No, we're gonna need mobile detection here. 
Okay, he already does have an observer out. I was gonna say. Overlords, hello? Or sorry, Void Rays, what are you doing? Yeah, leave those larvae alone. They will bleed out. We really need to get an expo going here. ASAP. Ten and a half minutes into the game. Astrea, as good as his economy has been compared to Darks, has found himself with, yeah, bases that are running out. So he really needed this base a couple minutes ago, preferably. So right now, yeah, he still does have the income advantage, but it's starting to look a little finicky. By the way, this expansion super easy to kill. Problem is that these creep tumors have been going in the direction of the Zork's main base. And Dark is not spoiling the surprise of that expansion. New hatchery was also made over here. Now we're gonna go into double Colossus production. Okay. Solid crisis management here though by Estrella. What's really funny is that like, if you look at the supply counts right now, this game is actually surprisingly even. And I think ultimately the unit composition that Estrella is going for is superior to that of the Zerk. Somehow, okay, I was gonna say, we're scooting by a bunch of these stasis wards. Sorry, lads. Oh, he does get the Void Ray. Interesting. Do we already have two Colossi? Yeah, we're gonna go into four Colossi right now with ranged. Those are gonna absolutely destroy Hydras and Zerklings. Colossi are fantastic against light units, and it turns out Hydras and Zerklings are exactly that. So these big skyscraper looking things, they should prevent any real damage right now on the Zerk, or on the Protoss army, rather. At least in theory, right? We've seen it go wrong many, many times for Protoss players. So, what do we do now? What is the approach now? Oh, double Expo. Okay, Estrella is going double Nexus here. Two Stalkers, two Immortals. He's making two of each. Hive coming up right now for Dark, together with a Lurker Den. Although the Lurker Den was not meant to be. Nicely sniped right there by Estrella. Hmm. <laughs> There's just a bunch of lats walking around right now with a defensive bubble. Do we have blink? No, there's no blink. I don't even think we have a Twilight Council. No. This expansion in the bottom left is actually kind of wild, though. I think that Dark is kind of risking it a bit too much. This expansion does not seem like a nece uh, necessity at all, and then, uh, yeah. I mean, if this turns out to be a long macro game, obviously that expansion being mined out is going to bite Estrella in the butt quite a bit. Okay. There's the restarted Lurker, then. There's the Vipers coming up. I wonder if Dark didn't realize that it got sniped. Because he only just now remade it. And that means he's not gonna have a proper army to fight all of these Protoss units. But then again, Astrea really doesn't have a lot of backbone for his Colossi. He really needs more sustain for these units, doesn't he? He's warping in just like a few Stalkers at a time. We do have four Gateways. Might be about time we add on a few more. Uh, at this point, I guess he doesn't really need to. Yeah. The Hydras are incredibly strong. He's thinking about stepping further and further onto Creep, though. But, I mean, Mist Rally the Immortal here. I think Dark is ready to spring the trap. Keep in mind that there is now a group of Vipers available. And Vipers are really good, there you go, at abducting these expensive Protoss units. Good pickup control right there, though, by Estrella. Trying to keep these units alive as well. The Hydra's hunting down the Prism. He does get it. And ultimately, I think that means that his entire Protoss army is going to fall. Overextension right there by Estrella. A very expensive decision. He didn't see any lurkers. He did see the vipers though. So I think what he decided to do is commit to that fight regardless. But when the void rays got sniped, suddenly those vipers were very difficult. I, 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 I wonder if you do that fight a bunch of times though and in a slightly different location where the hydros can't come in from such a massive concave, right? And Protoss isn't there such a choke. I think with better control, Estrella could have actually won that fight. But again, Dark is like a Super Saiyan here, powering up when he really needs to. And ultimately, the man is gonna be able to get to his beloved Hydra Lurker Viper unit composition. Estrella at this point, though, does have four Nexi. He is going into Blink. 
plus two is coming up. Additional gateways are building inside of the main base. Remember that Misrelit Immortal 2? I really feel like one Immortal even would have been really nice to have, because that was a close fight. A couple small mistakes right there by Estrella. Really, yeah, really costly in the end. Okay. This expansion in the bottom left, though. Ay, 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 ay. Completely unscouted. Estrella has been looking around the map. Maybe that's also why he committed to that fight, right? Because you've got a feeling about how big your opponent's army could potentially be based off the amount of economy that you've seen them have. So if suddenly their army turns out to be a bit bigger, it could be that it's a miscalculation on your part, or it could be that there's a proxy base, right? And it turns out in this case, there is a proxy base. Australia, though, not checking for it. That may actually backfire quite a bit. Okay. Yeah, he's scouting everywhere. He's scouting everywhere except where that base is located. This would have been a free pickoff a long time ago. Anyways. Do we still like this position though here for Dark? I think it's a lot nicer now for him than it was a few minutes ago. Yeah. Hydra Lurker Viper is a common unit composition that theoretically, or theoretically rather, can deal with everything. We really do need another Nexus here pretty soon. It's just that Astrea at this point doesn't have that large of an army, so committing to another base and all that infrastructure that comes with it is very costly. Oh no, he still doesn't know about the base. Spire coming up. I think a Brute Lord addition would be amazing here for Dark. Or just, I guess, the potential to make Corruptors. Finally, that fifth Nexus comes up, and guess what? That is a scary Zerk army. Insta cancel. Never going to happen. Dark is effectively trying to create a bit of a soft contain on the opponent, it seems. I really don't think he needs to get aggressive. Fleet Beacon is coming up right now. We have Vipers, but the Vipers are not here. And if the Vipers aren't here, you can't really abduct. Dark, you need to send the Vipers towards the front, man. There you go. Finally, they're turning around. It's gonna take them a little bit. Okay, he does apparently have vision right here of these photon cannons that were bugging him earlier in this game. Spire does get spotted at this point. Disruptor's coming up together with plus one arrow weapons. Here's the abductions though that I'm scared of. Yep. That also creates an opportunity for at least some of the lurkers to try and tiptoe forward. Not quite happening. We really do need to feedback these units if we can. Storms are nice, but I actually think feedbacks might be more important. Uh, easier said than done, though. There we go. Okay, that's a good Nova. Problem is, the Lurker count at this point is big. And even though the Skytel's transition is underway, I really don't think Dark needs to be this aggressive at this point. Even though it is sort of underway, Dark never wants the game to go that long. He's maxed out right now, he's got a good economy, He's got a Spire, Mama Ship coming up, okay. That is apparently the unit we want to make here. This is one of the best series I've seen Dark play. Maybe not best as far as like superior Zerg gameplay goes, but this is one of the most entertaining series that I've seen Dark play. Likewise, of course, well done here by Estrella, who really has more or less just been a passenger <laughs> in this entire series so far. Starting off with the double gateways, sure. Making some fascinating decisions of his own as well, don't get me wrong. But he's been forced to react to this Zerk, and he's doing an excellent job. Staying alive. Now, is staying alive good enough? At first, I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Stand alive! Okay, no, I, I don't... Ooh, no, I don't think this is good enough here. I think Estrella is slowly bleeding out. Like, at this point, we're fishing for lucky Novas, while the Disruptors are nova and the, the Vipers are the ones really dealing the damage. This base, if this base never happened, I think Estrella would have been in such a good spot, but he never even thought about checking. It can still happen, though. It can still happen right here for Estrella. There's the Mama ship. Activate the cloaking. Activate the cloaking, mama! She's not gonna do it? Alright. 
We don't have any detection. There finally is the cloaking activated. That does mean that a bunch of these units will stay alive, and at the very least, that was slow though. At the very least, it allows Astraea to stabilize and not lose the Nexus. Problem is, like I said, he needed the fifth base. This is his fourth in a world of trouble right now. Main base is running out, Natural's running out, third base, even though it was taken super late. Also running low at this moment. I think even if this fort stays alive for another couple minutes, which is looking unlikely at this point in time, uh, that's a good stasis ward. Yeah, I still don't see it happening. Nice feedback as well, but it uh, comes at the cost of a Viper. We even have a time warp right here. Also, again, in the perfect position, but I think Dark is reading his opponent like a book. He knows exactly what he needs and what he can get done right now. He doesn't even have half his army because it's stasis. But there it is. I think this is game over right here for Astrea. But what a fascinating series. He's gonna activate the cloaking upgrade once again, but this time around, there are a bunch of overseers nearby. Dark now more than doubling his opponent's army supply. Another one of the carriers falls. There it is. It's Dark who obtains the victory. Today I want to give a special shout out to the Patreon supporters for directly supporting my channel. If you're interested in some of the perks that I offer over there, or you simply just want to support me as well, you can head on over to patreon.com slash lowcozyv. There's also a link down below in the description of this video. For now though, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile, and I hope to see you once again very soon for another video.